Hi, this is Edward Mendoza, and today I wanted to cover how you can get through your graduate degree and not worry and obsess so much about the grades. Stay tuned. Chronos Matrix, focus on what matters most. Visually keep your goals in check and create new goals so you can stay on schedule. Watch your daily, weekly, and monthly results to stay focused. Free time optimization app. I think this is a pretty important video for quite a few people that are, that are watching that are already struggling with the class. Um, now, don't get me wrong. If you know you're doing really badly towards the, uh, the withdrawal period, I always tell people, just drop. If, if you know you're already going to uh, um, tank, the, uh, tank the class early on, if you're way over your head, you know, it's, it's totally understandable. A lot of times we're um, not just from going from an undergrad to a graduate degree, um, you know, there's quite a bit of a transition, but a lot of us didn't have a really rigorous kind of uh, college experience as what's being expected in, uh, in, in, in a university like, like Georgia Tech, right? So as much, as you might think you're prepared for some courses until you actually go through the course you don't know exactly what's being expected um, and again OMS uh, um, OMS Central might have a really good idea and give you like an overview of what a course is like but remember they keep cranking up the notch of the difficulty of all these classes so anything that you're reviewing you have to realize it's going to be a semester over and it's in their best interest to keep making these courses harder like I've mentioned in, uh, in a couple of other videos. First reason is, you know, it legitimizes, uh, you know, the difficulty of, uh, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the education, right? Because if it's just too easy, people are like, oh yeah, that's a cakewalk. How legitimate is the, is the experience gonna be seen for most people? Everybody knows that OMSCS is not a joke. I mean, just look at some of the reviews for, for a lot of these classes. And then they're gonna take the reviews of classes that are just too easy and they're just gonna keep cranking them up. Now, in all fairness, they're gonna take the ones that are just absolutely just, you know, lethal and they're gonna crank those down too. So it's, it, it's not that they're only, you know, making things harder, but they're gonna have everything where everything's going to be from pretty difficult to very difficult. I think that's really kind of their, their end goal to make all these classes as miserable as possible. And yes, a lot of these classes are absolutely miserable when they don't need to be, right? It's like some classes, it, it's uh, the content isn't that difficult, but then they'll they'll completely hit you on uh, on the grading for the tests. And even if you, you might do an immaculate project, and then you'll just get hammered on on the uh, on the tests. And you know they might change. Um, some of these courses uh, had um, a, a pretty fair uh, curve that they would give towards the end. They'll take that out. Other courses they'll. Uh, increase the amount that, that um, that's weighted for for the tests versus the other parts of the project so they'll, they'll just kind of keep making things difficult so a, a lot of these uh, courses that are rated you really can't you know go by what, what what the ratings are per se you need to talk to somebody who's taking that class in that uh, in that semester and I'm hoping you know by me doing these videos there'll be other students that also want to chime in so you can get more of a of a real concept of what's going on so for for example like an um in uh, databases um, systems, right? They used to just allow you to put in any kind of uh, notes that you wanted as, as, uh, as, as many notes as you, as you wanted, right? Because the tests are so confusing and tricky that it's like, that's what's getting, I've built so many different databases in, uh, from apps to, um, to web, uh, um, to websites. There's just so many different uh, um, databases I've created. I've never had issues you know, uh, uh, making it rather complex um, SQL commands. But then the test, they're gonna throw you with all this theory and then they're gonna be very, very tricky with the wording. Every person I know who's taken this class has all said the same thing, man, the test just suck. Why would you make the test so difficult and so tricky when it's like, that doesn't really have to do with, you know, with the database um, creation, selection, just everything you're gonna be doing in the database. Well, because then you make a very difficult course and it makes it, it, it motivates people to drop. I've already seen a couple of people drop in this class when it's like the, the understanding of it isn't that difficult. It's like they're just getting subjects that are not that difficult than cranking it up uh, um, quite considerably and then making very difficult tests just to make difficult tests. I mean, it, it's not that you're going away from this, uh, these courses, then you, oh, wow, I exponentially know more. In some courses, yeah, and it's totally worth it. 
In other words, like these, uh, the, uh, um, uh, uh, this course and database, it's like they're making it difficult just to make it difficult. So the important thing that, to remember though, is that you can still get through these courses as long as it's not part of your foundational requirement, right? So in some of these classes like, uh, uh, like database, that's not going to be my specialization. I'm not going for computing systems. Uh, um, I mean, if I change my mind, then, you know, this entire video would, would be kind of, kind of pointless, but that's a course that's like, if I get a lower grade, it's fine as long as it's like a C, right? So remember, if you get a C, you know, or a couple of B's, and then you get a couple of A's, right now it's like I'm sitting on roughly like around three A's, right? You can fudge around and you can risk some of those classes and, and get lower grades, right? As long as it's a C, if you're getting a D, it's just tanking your GPA and it's useless. So if you know you're doing pretty bad towards the withdrawal period, just drop the class and, and forget it. Cause it's, I don't, I don't think it's worth the risk. And again, how simple would it be if they just like, well, that, you know, like in, in your undergraduate, you can just take it again and then that course overrides, um, you know, the previous one. And no, no, you're, you're, you basically die with that grade, whatever, uh, whatever grades you have before, it just keeps, you know, averaging with your grades. So if, if someone's going to be doing really badly in, in a class, it's what would be the point? You're going to just make yourself miserable later on because it, it like forces you to get A's in other classes. And like I mentioned before, every class, they're cranking it up and making it more and more difficult. This whole strategy is to keep us here as long as possible. I get it. I mean, they have financial reasons. There's two reasons to it. It's financial too, because the more classes you drop, it's just more class. Yeah, you're just going to have to take longer to, uh, to get your degree, right? So they have two financial reasons to, uh, to want to keep cranking it. So what's going to happen? Of course, they're just going to keep making these classes uh, more difficult. But on the long run, if you get enough A's, it can kind of, you know, mix in with the other courses, uh, um, course grades that you're doing and kind of help you out in, in the uh, longer term. This is also why you don't want to go for the hardest uh, courses they have to offer and then leave the side easier ones. It's like, guys, at the end of it, as long as you're motivated to learn the content that you want to learn, you don't even need this degree. Remember that it's like any, any degree you're getting, unless the degree itself is helping you to get that, you know, badass job that's like, well, you know, we, we need a candidate yeah, uh, um, that has a master's. What you're going to learn, you can learn on your own anyway. So the whole point at the end of the day, if it's just a piece of paper, just do what you have to do to get through it and get, you know, get that, get at least to see in a class, right? If you're doing worse than that, it's like, I don't know why you're taking the, you know, the course anyway, just take something else. But remember, if you have a couple of A's and you have a couple of C's even, they're gonna average to, uh, um, to a B, right? So the, the, I, I heard a student saying, it's like, well, B, you know, B's get degrees and it's such a good point. It's like, you don't have to suffer so much. This was a real hard struggle for me initially because it's like I came from a background of getting all A's in, in, uh, in my undergraduate. Right? So, and I had that mindset. It's like, well, if you work really hard, you can get the great. It's like, not here. No, it's, it's, it's like, ask that to you know, a student who's going to Harvard, going to MIT. It's like, you can bust your ass. You're still probably not gonna get that A no matter what you do. And ultimately, who cares, right? I mean, the whole point in high school was to you know, do really well uh, on your SATs to get into a, a, a good college afterwards. Most of us, this is going to be the end game, right? It's like after our graduate, after we get a master's, we're kind of done. I mean, maybe some people want to go for a, a PhD, but me personally, I just want to work and I'm, I'm going to keep learning on my own anyway. And then uh, and do a whole bunch of other uh, um, other projects, right? So for me personally, it wasn't as big of a deal um having real um, high gpa but based on their uh, on the uh, georgia tech's requirements you're going to have to maintain a certain gpa and some of these classes are going to have to get at least um at least uh a b if they're part of the foundational courses so what i would highly recommend if you're doing a foundational course you know it's part of your specialization and you're like you know anywhere at, towards the lower b by the time it's the withdrawal period just drop just drop it and take it the very next semester because uh, you have at least you know half of the, the the material down right so it's like at least half of the semester isn't going to be completely new so you can do that one again um and i would say definitely prepare yourself for the you know because you're going to drop so you're going to have a couple months that you can prepare for the next semester and i would say do it that way if it's a if it's a specialization course 
If it's not, I would say just keep going with, with it, unless you think, okay, I'm probably gonna get a D or an F if uh, this continues. So that way it's like you have you know a little bit of leeway that, that you can uh, that you can pull. All of us are gonna try and strive for the, you know for getting B's in every class, but on some of these, if if it's just like an elective, do your best and see if uh, if if getting that C is is uh, is possible. And then in other classes, you're gonna knock it out of the park. And with those A's, it's going to average in. But you know we're we're not in high school anymore. It's like. For me, the whole GPA, the whole struggle with the with, with the grades now is just to stay in the program and to be able to get the degree um, afterwards. Because think about it, it's, if you have a last, you get a, a D, not only did you ruin your, your GPA, now you're going to have to struggle and get a whole bunch of A's in very difficult courses that every semester they're making more difficult. So each semester is going to be harder for you to accomplish that goal, right? But you're, you can't use that um, that class for, uh, for um, you know, to finish your, your 10 um course requirements right so th at that point you kind of have to you, you know figure out what would be the best option so long story short don't stress out too much if uh, if you're not doing well in certain grades if they're courses that uh, um, aren't part of your uh, specialization right and with this would kind of key into what I was talking about before about you know when you're gonna decide your specialization once you're you know over the uh, the midpoint, which I am, you kind of already have to have a pretty solid idea of what you want um, for a specialization, unless your plan is just to, you know, stay here for years and years and just, you know, changing courses, which is also kind of doable. So, so yeah, um, don't stress out so much about the grain and know that in some classes it's going to be much harder. So, you know, thankfully we have a pretty late withdrawal period. It's it's almost like a month and uh, and a week or two before before the, ending, uh, the end of the course. So you have a really good idea at that point. It's like, what are your grades, how you're doing in the class, and how you're gonna be doing in the future. So, so yeah, stick in there if it's worth it. If not, you know, drop it and try it again, right? So this is why I keep mentioning it. This whole idea is like, oh, I can knock this out of the park in, in, in uh, two years, get it done quickly. Again, it depends on your background and even even someone like me who has plenty of experience uh, with databases and I'm struggling in, in the uh, database systems, not because it's difficult information. This is a lot of this is just repetition, but it's just, they structure it in a way that's just going to filter people out that know the material, but they're just, they're just making it difficult to be difficult. So, and they know why they're doing it. So this is not a, you know, it's not a mystery for anyone. So if you want to play their little game, you know, this is another way to, um, to play it. Right. <laughs> just remember they're going to keep cranking it up as semesters go so i say the quicker you get through and you know would be the better so hope that helps talk to you next time